So we're about to pivot a little bit from 988 to CCBHC. So in the beginning of this conversation, I referenced that we were gonna be introducing these two very large federal initiatives. The reason why we wanna talk about CCBHCs is one, because we're doing a lot of work here in Georgia around building out com the certified community behavioral health clinics. I often refer to CCBHCs as being cousins to 988. You cannot have a system that is built on crisis alone. If you've ever heard me speak before, I say that all the time, and I'm going to continue to repeat that. A system built on crisis is not a complete system. We have to talk about what happens before a crisis, as we don't want people to only feel that the way to seek help and support for behavioral health um, issues or challenges is through a crisis. So there are many things that can be done upstream, and we want to focus on that. And then there are things that can be done after the crisis. So you have to have a full, robust continuum of care that addresses everything from prevention, early intervention, late intervention, et cetera. CCBHCs will play a critical role in this work. And you'll see the connections, I believe, when you hear from our next speaker. Um, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to our project director, our state project director for CCBHCs, Sarepta Archilla. Sarepta? Thank you, Commissioner. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarepta Archila, and I have the pleasure of serving as DBHCD State Project Director for Certified Community Behavioral Health Clinics, or CCBHCs, as I will call them throughout the rest of this uh, presentation. I'm excited to introduce you to this work, the things that we have been investing in, preparing for, and the path that we see moving forward. Next slide, please. CCBHC is a new model and a new provider type that's designed to improve access and accountability in behavioral health care. The new model was defined in the Excellence in Mental Health Act back in 2014. It continues to have bipartisan federal support, most recently in the bipartisan Safer Communities Act. This model outlines clinical data and financial expectations while allowing states to customize aspects to meet their local needs and goals. The result is a comprehensive, person-centered, community-based care. In return for meeting the enhanced operations and data collection, CCBHCs can be certified by the state and become eligible to receive a new payment rate for services. This rate is specific to each CCBHC because it is based on the actual and anticipated costs instead of a fee-for-service. As Commissioner Johnson said, CCBHCs are a component of a robust behavioral health care system. We heard about 988, addressing someone to call, someone to respond, and a safe place to go in crisis. As a provider of comprehensive community-based services, a CCBHC can meet the needs of individuals before a crisis occurs by preventing crisis. The same CCBHC can also serve as a home for behavioral health care for individuals Crisis. CCBHCs serve individuals and families regardless of their ability to pay. But what exactly do I mean when I say serve? Next slide, please. CCBHCs are required to provide nine categories of services in a person-centered and trauma-informed manner. These services are crisis, uh, crisis intervention services, person-centered treatment planning, screening, assessment, diagnosis, and risk assessment, outpatient mental health and substance use services, case management, outpatient primary care and screening, care screening and monitoring, community-based care for veterans, peer family support and counseling, and psychiatric rehabilitation services. The CCBHC model is aligned with what Georgia community service boards currently provide with an increased emphasis on care coordination. That means that a CCBHC can meet a wide spectrum of needs, both directly and through connection, communication, and coordination with partners inside and outside of their agency. Care coordination prevents needs from going unmet due to gaps in a system. A good example of care coordination is primary health care. We know physical health and mental health are very much connected. One of the service categories that you see provided by a CCBHC is primary care screening and monitoring. 
a CCBHC can identify physical health needs or changes in physical health needs, connect an individual with appropriate physical health care, follow up and assist with any barriers to accessing that care. Next slide, please. In 2017, there were eight states that had at least one CCBHC in them. As you can see, the model has expanded to include almost every state and territory. This has been achieved largely through grants provided by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, directly to providers. Those funds allow for investment in the infrastructure that's required to become a CCBHC. To develop into a CCBHC, an agency must have one, the staff and resources to provide those nine required service categories, two, the ability to collect quality data for accountability, and three, the ability to identify and understand costs that are specific to their CCBHC work in order to develop the new sustainable funding, the prospective payment rate. Next slide. All of this is accomplished through a path to certification. Phase one is the beginning. Any provider in phase one has dedicated funds and resources to establishing a work plan toward implementation and certification. These providers have assessed the needs in their community and are preparing to meet those needs. Once they have moved on to phase two, implementing, these providers have attested to their ability to implement. That includes a review and adjustment of policies, procedures, staffing, their board governance, accreditations, and data and reporting abilities. At this phase, the provider has begun increasing access to services already, and they are preparing themselves to apply for certification with DBHTD. Phase three with certification is a completion of a rigorous process. Remember that while a CCBHC candidate might receive startup funding from grants from the federal government or elsewhere, it is up to the state's behavioral health authority to identify and certify the clinics and implement that unique funding system. This phase of certification ensures stakeholders that a provider is capable, competent, and accountable to meet the needs of the individuals they serve. Certification involves a review in depth of staffing, availability and accessibility of services, care coordination practices, scope of services, quality and other reporting, the organizational authority, and their governance and accreditations. This stage also includes a review of costs, anticipated costs, and the expected number of individuals to be served in the new model in order to implement that unique and sustainable funding, the prospective payment system. Next slide, please. This is where we are currently in the landscape of CCBHCs in Georgia. We have 11 CCBHC candidates. No locations have been certified at this time. Georgia has seven providers in phase one. You can see them there represented in gold. Five of these received planning and implementation grants, Pathways, Viewpoint Health, DeKalb CSB, CSB of Middle Georgia, and Chris 180. Two additional candidates are in the process of contracting with Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities, utilizing state appropriated funds. At the same time, we have four providers who have progressed into phase two, identified in dark blue. These providers have attested their readiness while continuing to build their infrastructure and provide the services expected. Two of these providers received CCBHC expansion grants from SAMHSA. The first was Pineland, followed by Advantage. Two are contracted with DBHD using COVID supplemental block grant funds. These are River Edge and New Horizons. All of our CCBHCs in Georgia will be held to the same expectations, utilizing the certification criteria that's being developed. We anticipate the next phase, phase three certification, to begin in 2023. Thank you so much for your time today and your attention, your interest in the topic, and your dedication to the individuals that are being served. To stay connected to this work, please visit ccbhcgeorgia.org. You can sign up for our newsletter and stay up to date on our progress through that site. Thank you again and have a great day. Thank you, Sarepta.